every time I make a copperhead video I get lots and lots of comments saying I don't know what I'm talking about and that's not a copperhead. These ain't the copperheads I'm used to. That's not a copperhead, it might be a hog nose, definitely harmless. It's a cobra, I know my snakes. That's not an American copperhead, it doesn't even look like a pit viper head. An American copperhead is light brown, damn ass. It's a racer you effing retard, trust me, I live in Texas. It's a king cobra, copperheads have leaves like patterns, shapes. This guy doesn't know snakes, obviously. It's a damn cobra of some sort. That's not a damn copperhead. So the two types of copperheads. Uh, copperhead's just a common name. Um, we've got one copperhead in Australia, and we've got another copperhead over in America. So I think I'm going to make a video and a work of art that's just going to clear this up once and for all. Copperhead versus Copperhead, USA versus Australia. Check this video out. I'm the snake artist. I've been catching, relocating copperheads since the early 90s. I know the copperhead pretty well. And where I live in Tasmania, it's the second most common snake I catch. But the copperhead is just a common name for Australaps superbus. On the other side of the world, there's another snake also called a copperhead, and this causes some confusion. Okay, in this bag here I have a copperhead. Somebody just called up, went out and picked it up in their backyard. Now I'm moving it to a space where it's a reserve, where nobody's allowed to hurt these guys. So once I get him out of the bag, I'll try and catch him so you can get a closer look at him. I'll show you what an Australian copperhead looks like. So Australian because Copperhead is a common name. A scientific name, Australaps superbus. This is a very different snake from what you find in America. Alright. Let's pop him out. It's fairly small. I don't like it when they're small. Oh, there's his head out already. Poke his head out for a moment. I think he's gonna give me a bit of a chase. Oh, come on. That's a trouble. Oh, that's a small head. You're a biter, aren't you, hey? Oh, it's still a But he's tying me up in a knots here. Let go. I'm not going to hurt you. Hey. Let's have a close look at him now. He's grabbing onto anything he can. So, when he opens his mouth, you don't really notice the fangs that much. The American Copperhead, you notice his big fangs hanging down. He's got a slender face. And when they get um, really raised up, they flatten their neck out like a they flatten their neck out like a like a cobra. He's one of the defining things of a copperhead too. Large scales at the side there. See a nice sort of coppery colour there. This is a beautiful colour, isn't it? Hey? Oh there he goes, he's trying to bite. Right, let him go down here. The type of art I've chosen to depict the two different types of copperhead is an etching. And with an etching what you have to do is cover a metal plate with a resist and then scratch into it. 
I'm scratching into it because what I intend to do is to drop it into an etching fluid and normally this is being acid in the past but, but I'm going to use a special mix of copper sulfate and salt. So here I am in America driving on the wrong side of the road which for here is the right side of the road. I'm here to meet a guy called Kevin Scott. Now Rob from the Smet Logic YouTube channel put me on to Kevin. Kevin believes he can find me a copperhead and that's the target species, it's the one I'm after because I can't finish this print, this work of art without experiencing an American copperhead. The interesting thing is I've never caught a copperhead in America. I don't know what they're like. I'm bringing my Australian snake catching equipment. I'm just going to catch it Aussie style and hope for the best. considered to be the least venomous of the snakes that we have in Missouri but at the same time like they have killed people okay but it's usually under like when someone gets killed by a copperhead it's usually under like weird circumstances like um, just last year a guy was uh, canoeing with his family and he, for some reason, like he saw a copperhead and for some reason he decided to pick it up and try to free handle it. And um, it, it bit him like multiple times. And he like laid down um, just to like rest and then like never got up from it. The guy didn't seek like medical treatment afterwards. He just kind of sat down and, you know, and then what happened happened so that was kind of the like the situation there but still I mean it's nothing that you know it's a it's a pit viper so it's still um, I think it would have hit a vein or something like that yeah I maybe I mean it, 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 something similar happened uh, a few years ago in um, I think it was in Kentucky but it was a captive animal in that situation it was a, a, a guy who kept venomous snakes um, and I think he may have been trying to like milk the snake, but it bit him on the elbow. Okay. And um, because of that bite, uh, it, that was a, a life-threatening bite, it did kill him. Um, and so I don't know if it was something about like the location of where the bite happened, but it was just, it was on the elbow and that was, you know, and that wound up like killing him. So I think it varies from person to person, but still nothing to, nothing you want to experience. A timber is far worse. A, a timber bite will, will put you in the hospital fairly quickly. After being bitten by a venomous snake. David Locke apparently thought the copperhead was injured and tried to kill and remove it before neighborhood kids discovered it. As News Channel 9's Kelsey Bagley. And that is to stay far away from all snakes. It's just a, it's a pain that I, I can't even begin to describe. I mean, uh, at 530, a Chesterfield woman like says she's blood. still recovering a month after being bitten by a copperhead snake. That is a bite, isn't it? Oh. This is a... I think the a lot bigger than this. Right, there we go. There we go. Oh, look at those fangs. Well. Wow. Well, that's the first copperhead I've caught. Australian style. What a beautiful snake, those markings. Yeah. So here, uh, well, we've got herpers herping on a road at night. And so 
Uh, the great thing about herping is that we connect people from all walks of life and all places and all uh, areas. So here we have Bill Flowers from Tasmania and Kevin Scott from Missouri by way of Rob Krautzer from Colorado. And here we're examining this, uh, this copperhead that we just found on the road at night. So we have uh, the, uh, the Australian copperhead, but then we also have the American copperhead. So here Bill gets to see and interact with, the, with our version of the copperhead. So. Yeah. And I decided to catch him Australian style. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a little wild, but... Um, so, yeah, so we're going to uh, probably shoot some pictures of this guy and then um, let him go off on his way, so... When I do an etching, I cover the metal plate with a bit of shellac and Indian ink. When it's dry, I scratch that away, exposing the bare metal. This is going to be etched away in a chemical process, which will leave deep lines inside the metal plate. Just sitting there in it. So this is the moment I've been waiting for, to sketch a copperhead in the US of A. The snake's very uneasy, because it's a wild snake. It's not used to being handled by somebody, by some big Aussie catching it. And so I'm very aware of this, and I'm sketching extra, extra fast. The longer I have it here, the more freaked out it could get, and I start feeling that it could be cruel. So I'm working as fast as I possibly can. There's a little bit of a standoff. Every time it tries to move, I try to get in front of it to stop it from escaping so I can sketch. Uh, but like all venomous snakes, it doesn't want to bite me. It just wants to get on its way. And that's all snakes want to do. They don't want to attack people. They just want to be left alone. One of the things I find really weird about this species is that it eats bugs. Uh, back home, the copperheads, they'll only eat something that has a backbone. So it has to be a frog, a lizard, or each other. Kind of like me, I don't like things that don't have backbones. But these guys, they eat things like cicadas. They will eat other vertebrates, but they'll eat invertebrates as well. And that's something I'm not used to in the snakes that I deal with. Usually when they sort of feel they can't escape, they'll just sort of settle a bit. I'll just sort of say, uh, okay, what are you going to do next? It's moving. Let's go. The tail quivering. Better off the area. What's that? He's going to get the better of me. He gets to a point where I just think, ah, oh, I'm just being cool now, I should let him go. I'll just let him go. Do you want to film him going? What's that? See what he goes there. He's on the move. Oh, that's good. There he goes. There he goes. Okay, I'm not used to this scientific name. Agkistrodon, meaning fish hook teeth. Cool. Concortex, meaning contorted or twisted. Okay, I can see that. I can see the fish hook like teeth when it's trying to bite, 
I also see how it could be twisted because when you go to grab it, it twists around your stick. But it's very similar to the Australian copperhead. It does exactly the same thing when you try and catch it. Probably even more so, it just wraps itself around the stick. And sometimes you... Okay, so in this takeaway container, I have warm water and salt. And now I'm adding some copper sulfate to it. Doing this because it's a bit safer than using acid. And yet it will eat through an aluminium or aluminum plate very quickly. Stirring it with a stick, because the stick's not made of metal and it's not going to erode on me. Now I'm going to drop in the plate and everywhere I've scratched away it should start eroding straight away. You can sort of see it's flaking off as I hit it with a feather because again there's no metal in it. Now that didn't take long, it's probably about 10 minutes and it's done so now I'm going to clean it off with a bit of methylated spirits because the resist I used was shellac and some Indian ink so it should come off quite easily. It's an exciting time and scary time. All that work could have been for nothing. Uh, it's not looking too bad actually looks like a pretty good etch so I think that has everything in it that I want next step I'm going to use a roulette wheel and this is now going into engraving techniques after sketching the American copperhead and on the way back Kevin Scott, Lady Jennifer and myself we find another copperhead a beautiful little tiny guy who just keeps striking every chance he gets so we admire his beauty and let him get on his way Alright, the roulette wheel. It's not for gambling it's an old French engraving tool used to imitate chalk or pencil in fact the technique was called chalk mannerism so what I'm doing is I'm rolling over the tiny little dots to make grey tones. And so what I'm going to have to do is pull a proof. What that means is do a test print to see how I'm going. From the test print I can use that as a guide and then continue to add more shade. And with making the test print what I do is I ink up the plate, I push the ink into the grooves, I clean off the surface ink so all the ink is caught in the little lines that are being etched away. And now I push it through the press, I'm using my adapted pasta press to do this because it's only a small print. And I have myself a proof. So now I can go back to the drawing board, get out the roulette wheel again, and work this plate a little bit more. Back in Australia. Somebody called me out to rescue another snake and again it's a copperhead. So let's have a look at this guy. Taking half the garden with him. Must be keen to want to get out of there, surely. We're real keen on tipping it all out. Oh, there he goes. There we go. We have a close look at this one. Got to get him right. Because I think he's about number 11 on the list of world's most deadly snakes, as far as venom toxicity goes, anyway. There we go. You can see how narrow the head is compared to the American copperhead. It's got a very narrow head. A little stick and open his mouth, see if we can see his fangs. There we go. You can see there, you can't really see the fangs much at all. They're tiny. Barely more than a millimetre long. So that's one of the really big differences between the two copperheads. 
can see his tongue hanging out there. Oh, his tongue, his windpipe. See yeah. that? All snakes have that. That's one thing it would be the same. The other big thing you notice difference, I'll take that out of his mouth. See his eyes are very different. Of course this is a species that comes out during the daytime. So I'll let this guy go. I'm having a bit of a dent in him somewhere. You can have a pat, yes. Just there, there seems to be a bit of damage there. It's like a oh, broken yeah. rib or something like that. So it's been in strife sometime in their life. It's only a young one. It's got a very raspy breathing at the moment. I'm going to let this guy go. So around here, there's lots of his favourite food. There's frogs down, down there, there's, I can see a dam from here. But also there's lizards all around here too. And so this guy loves lizards. So I'm going to drop him down here and see him disappear quickly. There we go. I can see him into the... There he goes. It's the magic of snakes, they can just disappear like that. And this is one of the great things about snakes. This copperhead's now in here, just a little pile of rocks. You walk past rocks everywhere here. There's probably snakes all around me. They hide in a clump of grass and bushes. Their body can just swirl around and although he's that long, can hide in something that big. That's just the brilliant way that these guys have evolved to, to hunt and to evade capture and evade being hunted themselves. It's one of the things that's so beautiful about snakes and just amazing, amazing how natural selection's done this. Anyway, back to the drawing board. Go do some more art. The two copperheads, which one is the most dangerous? Well, when you're talking danger, there's a few things you've got to take into account. There's fang length, there's the size of the snake, there's the venom yield, there's the venom toxicity, and there's the temperament of the animal. So let's have a look at those five features. Okay, when you're looking at size, the Australian copperhead has it all over the American one. It's much larger by a couple of feet. When you're looking at fang length, the fang length of the average copperhead in America is easily double that in Australia. And yet, when you think that the snakes don't get as big, if you had two snakes the same length, the fang length would probably be four times the size. So the Americans have it with fang length. With venom yield, I would say the venom yield's about the same. When you look at venom yield, it says that the Australian copperhead has twice as much venom in a bite. However, when you look at the size, the American copperhead's about half the size. So, pretty much the same, but Australia's just winning just a little bit there. But venom toxicity, that's another story. The, out of the vipers in America, the copperhead's considered to be the least venomous. Australian copperhead, however, that's on a par with the Indian Cobra. In some lists they put it up in the top 10, or only just making the top 10. Uh, it is extremely venomous. Both snakes are not keen to bite you. Both snakes will get away from you where you can. But the thing with the Australian copperhead is it's extremely unlikely to bite. I had to search through to try and find a fatality in Australia with the copperhead. Apart from the fact that it uh, is unlikely to bite, it's also that it is likely to give a dry bite, and both species of copperhead will give dry bites. I found one newspaper report 
of an unconfirmed copperhead death in Australia. Apart from that, I don't think there is one. In America, however, there is a few deaths by copperhead and again, through strange circumstances which Kevin Scott talked about before. So body count, yes, US has it, but in both of what we take away from this is that both species, they'll dry bite when really provoked. They don't want to bite, they want to leave you alone. So are they dangerous? Probably not. I think you could live with both of these species quite easily and as long as you don't hurt them or harass them, they'll just go their own way. Beautiful species. Both are beautiful species. I tend to really favour the American copperhead because the fangs look awesome and the patterns are beautiful. It's beautiful, that's what I think. See his tail? Yeah. The, like the green on the end? Oh, green, yeah. See that? Oh, yeah. And so now with the piece of art that I'm doing, I've got my print. I'm now going to hand colour the print. However, the disapproval of hand colouring of, uh, of printmaking is a fairly recent thing, it's fairly modern. Uh, Pre-20th century is a very common practice and so I'm quite happy to hand colour. I think, I think it looks great and so here is my hand coloured print of both species of copperhead, American and Australian. Share it with somebody who doesn't like snakes. <laughs> <laughs>